Recently, it seems like COVID has really lightened up. No masks in grocery stores, in airports, and even on airplanes. Almost every music festival and major event is back. It feels like it's finally over. But this has kind of happened before, right? Things have really lightened up and then boom, another wave, another variant, and things are pretty strict again. But I don't know, something about this time just feels different. So is COVID really over? And what do we do moving forward in the event of a brand new pandemic? I got a chance to sit down with Bill Gates and ask him some questions I've been wondering. He's been researching pandemics long before COVID. Back in 2015, he gave a talk about how we weren't ready for a pandemic. Sadly, we didn't get ready. So it's been just unbelievable, you know, tens of millions of deaths, 14 trillion of economic damage. And so maybe this time we will listen and make those uh, investments in full-time people in practice. And it's true, we really weren't ready for COVID. You guys remember when it was like this? But it doesn't necessarily have to be like that again. I know everyone is really sick of hearing about COVID, but the reality is another pandemic happening within our lifetime is pretty likely. But the good news is if we prepare today, it won't be nearly as bad as COVID. Recently, airlines, I guess the government made it so you don't have to wear a mask on a plane. So I think a lot of people are starting to think COVID feels like it's going away, but do you think it's just the way of life now or is it actually gonna go away ever? Until we get some really amazing tools like vaccines with you know 10 year duration, we'll have a background level of uh, COVID just like we do a flu. And unless a new variant comes along, it won't be much worse than flu. We have some therapeutics that will bring the death rate down. We have to keep pushing the vaccination rates up quite a bit. You might have a local area where you have an outbreak that they ask you to put masks on, but I don't think we'll be shutting down schools or businesses. The big negative surprise would be some new variant that escapes the immunity. Uh, that's not likely, but you know we didn't expect to see Omicron. So we'll, we need to keep monitoring uh, but I, I hope that it's more like a flu type thing uh, going forward and not, you know, all of society getting disrupted. So the good news is it does seem likely that we're past the worst of it and things probably aren't going to fully shut down again. But that's not to say there couldn't be a totally new pandemic one day in the future. How likely do you think is it that there would be a brand new pandemic in the next, say, 10 years? You know, I'd say the risk is something like one to two percent per year. These diseases come from other species. You know, HIV came from chimpanzees. Uh, this one we think uh, uh, came through bats uh, directly or indirectly. You know, it's hard to calculate. We did, I think we were lucky to go a hundred years. I don't think we'll get to go another hundred years. So sometime in the next 20 years, a meaningful risk of a repeat. In his new book, he's advocating that the U.S. spends quite a bit of money on preventing the next pandemic. Most of the money you're going to spend to be ready actually has benefits even in non-pandemic years. You know, I'm advocating that we put, uh, you know, a few hundred billion in, you know, to avoid these trillions of dollars of lives and tens of millions of deaths. You know, it's worse than any war in US history. And it's true that COVID resulted in almost a million deaths in the US. For context, that is over double the number from World War II. You know, we created the United Nations after World War II. We did a lot, and fortunately, you know, we haven't had that size of a war. So this finally is the warning signal that, okay, let's, let's take this seriously. So what exactly would the billions of dollars be spent on? According to his research in the book, a global response team of about 3,000 people, a detection system, new tools for diagnosing, and of course, vaccines to name a few. But we could spend all the money in the world on tools to prevent another vaccine, but one thing none of us, I think, predicted was COVID becoming political. And now it's really hard to imagine how you prevent that from happening. I think you mentioned COVID, like a lot of it becoming political, and that was a a frustrating thing, I think. Is there a way we can do better with that so that people aren't on different pages about masks and vaccines? The politicization of it, 
you know, could we have avoided that with the right ways of uh, working with different people? You know, we've had this in the polio eradication where people said the vaccine was to sterilize people and it, you know, it was really bad. In that case, we went to religious leaders and they would visibly vaccinate their children and we overcame that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we were creative enough about finding the people who were trusted. Um, you know, we had some left, left wing vaccine refusal. We had some right wing vaccine refusal. That's, that's a mistake. You want to have the trusted voices there. Um, the U.S. was particularly bad on that. Um, and so we should examine our uh, way we do communication. And uh, some of the lack of clarity, I think, fed that as well. And then the people who are still out there that haven't been vaccinated, how do you think they could be convinced to? Because it seems like there are some people who are just like, will not do it. You know, it's interesting to think, who are the trusted people that could get the pockets that are still there and bring them around? Obviously, if you have a friend that dies, you know, that's pretty powerful, but we don't want to wait for that as our main, mm -hmm. okay, we'll wait until one of your friends dies and then you'll, uh, You'll, you'll come around. We should study communities that got very high vaccination rates and try and compare them to where we did not get high vaccination rates. We didn't realize that would be such a problem. You know, it is weird. You stick this metal needle in your arm and it hurts and the next day you feel weird. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how you protect your health is by uh, doing that. I hope in the future the vaccine's just like a patch you put on your arm or something that you inhale. I do think the needle drives some of that hesitation where, where it's, uh, you know, people worry how they're, that's gonna feel. But the US is among, of the rich countries, we have more unvaccinated people than almost anyone else. Wow, I did not realize that. Yeah, it's, and we didn't expect that. It became more political in the US than in any other country. And then what were some of the biggest failures from this pandemic that we would try to avoid and learn from? Well, the communication of, uh, you know, you should wear masks or how things were done, we just were so unsure. Like the mask message uh, was very late in coming. And then it, they would kind of say, oh, now you don't, now you do need to. And so people definitely got confused about that. There was a period where if you were vaccinated, you didn't have to wear the mask, but we had no way to prove we were vaccinated. So that was kind of a weird period to be in. I was also curious to know what he thought of not just vaccines, but other treatments that you can take. And we've seen some newer antiviral drugs. I've seen Pfizer created one. What are your thoughts on those and should we'd be investing into those too? Yeah, we took a long time to get the therapeutics. Uh, Paxlovid, the Pfizer drug you're mentioning there, is an incredible therapeutic and it's finally getting out and available. And so even for people who get severe disease, if you catch it early enough, it looks like the death reduction is very, very high. And I do think for the next pandemic, we can have therapeutics far faster. Two years was a long time. We tried a lot of things, but the early ones were very ineffective and it was confusing. You know, people were hoping that uh, some other like malaria drugs would help. Turned out they didn't, but there was immense confusion about that. We should have had clear evidence. There's so much uh, that we can do better next time uh, by having quick plans that, okay, when you need it, you know, how do you go full speed to get all the approval and manufacturing, not just for the US, but hopefully uh, for the entire world. And I guess to wrap it up, what do you think the biggest lesson we've learned from COVID is? Well, we can't take health for granted. And, you know, we've all got to, uh, you know, look out in our community and see where the, the pain is and hopefully draw, have that draw us together as we help each other out. Uh, the worst part, I believe, is behind us uh, and we can capitalize on the good things that came out of it. You know, we should do our best to make sure it doesn't happen again. All right, I know this video was a little different for my channel. Hope that you guys enjoyed watching. And if you wanna check out the book, I'll link it down below. And that is gonna be it for this video. Bye.